to find out how a charged particle moves in an electric field, uh, we can use two uh, different equations. The first equation is the equation that tells us that the force on the particle depends on the electric field at the location of the particle. F equals Q times E. The second equation is Newton's second law, which tells us that if there is a force acting on a particle with a mass m, then the force is equal to the mass times the acceleration. For the first equation, let's uh, draw some electric field vectors uh, in space. For a particle located at a certain point with a charge Q, the magnitude and direction of the force depends on the magnitude and direction of the electric field at the location where the particle is. So the force vector would point in the same direction as the electric field if the charge is positive and the force acting on the particle would point in a direction opposite to the electric field if the charge of the particle is negative. So uh, the equation F equals QE uh, helps you find the force acting on the particle and now the equation Newton's second law F equals MA tells you how to find the acceleration if you know the force acting on the particle. So the vector acceleration points in the same direction as the vector force and if you know the charge of the particle, the mass and the electric field at the, in a region of space then you can figure out what's the acceleration of the particle by combining these two equations. F is equal to QE but F is also equal to MA. So MA should be equal to QE Therefore, the acceleration is the ratio between Q and M multiplied by the electric field. Notice that the acceleration doesn't just depend on the mass. It depends on the ratio between the charge of the object and its mass. Since this quantity is important, uh, it has a special name. It's called the uh, charge-to-mass ratio. If two objects have the same charge-to-mass ratio, then this equation tells us that they're going to move in exactly the same way when placed in an electric field. For example, if an object is 10 times as big as the other one, but it also has 10 times as much charge, then the small and the big object would move identically when placed in an electric field. Now let's look at an application of these ideas uh, for the case of a positively charged particle moving inside a parallel plate capacitor. So let's say that the left plate is positively charged and the negative plate is negatively charged and we place a particle at some point close to the positive charge and we give the particle a, an initial velocity uh, that is straight down. So the electric field lines between the positive and the negative plates are pointing to the right. They're all the same, uh, electric field vectors are all the same magnitude, pointing in the same direction. And uh, if you give this particle a velocity downwards, initial velocity pointing down, then uh, wh what's going to be the motion of this particle? How would it move uh, between the plates of the capacitor? The answer is that this uh, charged particle is going to move in a parabolic trajectory. Now, why is that? Why should it be a parabola? Well, the answer is that uh, since the electric field uh, is uniform and it points to the right, the force acting on this particle as it moves between the plates is always going to have the same magnitude and it's going to point always in the same direction. Assume that there is no gravity acting in this problem. So the only force is the electric force due to the electric field. So this force, as I said, is constant and it points to the right. That means that the acceleration that this particle is going to experience at any point on the trajectory, it's going to point to the right. The vector acceleration has a constant magnitude and it points in the same direction. So every time you have a particle moving a, with constant acceleration, the motion of that particle is going to be a parabola. If the velocity does not coincide, if the initial velocity does not coincide with the direction of the acceleration as it is the case here. 
Now if we turn the capacitor 90 degrees in a clockwise direction with a positive plate on top and the negative plate at the bottom, uh, the situation looks a little bit more familiar to you since it resembles the motion of the particle uh, under the influence of gravity alone. So for the initial velocity, meaning the x direction, uh, we know that the x component of the velocity uh, is going to remain constant and that the y component of the velocity is the one that is going to change. So if the particle is inside a capacitor in this, in this setup, then uh, we know that the y component of the velocity should change with time since there is an acceleration that is constant in that direction. So Vy at some point is equal to the Vy initial plus the acceleration due to the electric force uh, times delta t. And as I said, in the x direction the velocity remains constant. Now for the capacitor with the vertical plates that we that we're discussing, we figure out that the acceleration points to the right in the x direction. So that means that the x component of the velocity is going to change with time. The y component remains constant for the vertical capacitor, but the x one is the one that changes. How does it change? According to kinematics equations, it changes linearly with time. The final x component of velocity is equal to an initial value of the x component plus a delta t, where the acceleration that we have is the charge to mass ratio multiplied by the electric field. Alright, so let's do an example of this. Let's uh, have a parallel plate capacitor, negative and positive as you see there, and let's shoot an electron inside the parallel plate capacitor with a velocity that is 5 times 10 to the 6 meters per second at an angle of 45 degrees. We know that the electron uh, lands on the positive plate uh, a distance of 8 centimeters from the initial location. So with this information, the idea is to find the strength of the electric field inside the capacitor. So let's start by thinking about the connection between the electric field, the force, and the acceleration. Since the electric field points up from positive plate to negative plate, the force on an electron would be downwards, as the blue vector indicates. If the force on that electron is downwards, the acceleration is also going to be downwards. So this is the acceleration that is going to be responsible for bending the trajectory of the electron downwards. This uh, trajectory is a parabola, since the acceleration is constant because the force on the electron is constant because the electric field inside the capacitor is constant. The acceleration of the electron is connected to the strength of the electric field through the equation Q over M times E. Now, since this is an electron, we know the charge of the electron, we know its mass, and if we knew the acceleration, we would be able to answer the question about how much is the electric field. So the task, therefore, is to use the information given to find the acceleration, and once we have the acceleration, the problem is solved, uh, we can find the electric field. So how do we find the acceleration? You could start by taking a look at the time that the electron spent airborne. That time, which is the time that it takes the electron to move a horizontal distance of 8 centimeters, uh, with a velocity given by the x component of its initial velocity. So that time is therefore 8 times 10 to the minus 2 meters divided by the, the x component of the initial velocity, which is 5 times 10 to the 6 times the cosine of 45 degrees, that's meters per second. If you do this calculation, you find that the time of flight is 2.26 times 10 to the minus 8 seconds. Now, what can we do with this time of flight? How do we relate that to the acceleration, which is what we're after? So the idea is that the time for the electron to reach the top of the trajectory is going to be one half of the time of flight. So that time to get to the top of the trajectory is 1.13 times 10 to the minus 8 seconds. Now, knowing the time to go up, we can uh, relate that to the acceleration because at the top of the trajectory the velocity is purely horizontal which means that the y component of the velocity is zero. So the equation for the y component of the velocity of the electron is kinematics relationship 
which tell us that the uh, velocity at some point is equal to the y component of the velocity at initial minus the acceleration in the vertical direction times delta t. At the top of the trajectory, the uh, vertical component of the velocity is zero. So we have zero equals v0 sine 45 degrees, which is the initial value of the y component of the velocity, minus the acceleration times the time to go up. So from this equation, you can find how much is the acceleration of the electron. And knowing the acceleration of the electron, you can figure out what's the electric field. So please do that, and uh, choose in all space the correct answer for the electric field in this capacitor.